As I walked along behind my sister Debbie, I tried to remember everything she had been teaching me over the past month. I couldn't help but wonder why I had to wear a skirt that was so short. Do I have to stand up all night? Debbie just grinned mischievously but replied, It'll be good practice for you, Sandy. I was actually enjoying what Debbie had done to me since she came home on break from school and discovered I'd been going through her things. She had warned me before leaving that if she found out I had broken my promise, I'd be sorry. She had hidden a few surprises in her closet and drawers, so she could tell if I'd been snooping. Our mom knew Debbie's plans and agreed to them before she left, so I had no help coming from her. Debbie went all out, knowing that when she was done, I wouldn't be able to pass for a guy for quite some time. The first step was getting hair extensions, a new hair color, and a full makeover. I was shocked to see what they'd done to my eyebrows, it changed the look of my entire face. Along the way, Debbie and our mom started calling me by my new name, Sandy. Debbie and Evelyn were determined to transform me. As we made our way to meet some of Debbie's friends for a night out, I couldn't help but wonder where all of this was leading. My sister Sharon said that if I looked passable, she could get me a job at her dad's office, killing two birds with one stone. My transformation into Sandy was well underway. The night out with Debbie's friends was both exhilarating and nerve-wracking. They welcomed Sandy into their circle with open arms, and I couldn't help but feel a strange sense of belonging, despite the unease I still had about my transformation. Debbie's friend Sharon, who had offered to help me find a job at her dad's office, seemed especially excited about introducing me to her father. I wondered how this would work out. What would my life be like if I started working as Sandy? Would I be able to maintain a dual identity? As the night went on, I started to get more comfortable in my new persona. My voice had been trained to sound more feminine, and I was even getting used to the way my skirt swayed as I moved. Debbie was there to guide me through the social nuances and etiquette of being a young woman, and I couldn't help but appreciate the effort she had put into transforming me. By the time we arrived at Sharon's dad's office, I was doing my best to exude confidence, even though I felt far from confident about the situation. Sharon introduced me to her father, and to my surprise, he seemed genuinely interested in my potential as an employee. My sister had clearly put in a good word for me. Over the next few weeks, I underwent a series of interviews and tests at the office, with Sharon's dad mentoring me personally. It was challenging, but I couldn't deny that I was making progress in my new role as Sandy. As time passed, I began to adapt to my double life. During the day, I was the diligent and determined Sandy, working hard to prove myself in a professional environment. In the evenings, with Debbie's guidance, I embraced my feminine side, enjoying the camaraderie of her friends and the exciting experiences they offered. I still had my moments of doubt and hesitation, but I was starting to understand that maybe there was more to this transformation than I initially thought. Perhaps, in embracing the changes, I was uncovering a side of myself that I never knew existed. My journey as Sandy was just beginning, and I was determined to see where it would lead.